Howdy folks, I'm back again, another week, another week of um, another restoration, so um, let's do what we always do, give everybody a mention, um, all the people who's left me nice comments, thanks to all the new subscribers, everything like that, um, well it's not far off 2000 now, it's coming up, it's 1950 9, something, I'm surprised it's gone as high as that, <laughs> who wants to look at my ugly mug every bloody week? Well, obviously you lot do. I don't know why, but there you go. Everybody to their own. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. This is um, some um, food. There's food mentions for people who's left the old, you know, nice comments and all that. Like I always do. Restoration Australia. Thanks for that. John Moore, Robert Garrett, Robert Sterling, uh, Andrew Derrick, uh, Chewy Eight. That's a new one. Paddy O'Brien, Randy, RDK Metal Metal. And Matchbox Resurrection, Brian from Thailand, and Bert M. That's just a few of the many of you who've left so many nice comments. Thanks for that. Anyway, we'll get on with a few of the um, things that I've, uh, comments I've had. Bill's Diecast Customs. Lovely job again, Bob. I use Tarzan Grip white glue for the windows. He's on about when I, on the old um, Volkswagen video, the last video, when I fix the window. I mean, I wasn't too happy with it, really because you can see the edge, look inside on, you can see like where I've done it, but I wasn't too pleased with how it did come out that window, it's, it's good enough for now, but I have got a new one on order, but sometimes you can do it practically invisible, he uses something called Tarzan Grip, um, I probably, he says I've probably heard of it. it, it dries clear, he uses it to glue his windows in or something, he's not sure what brand I get <clears throat> in the UK, but I probably already know about it, well I don't, um, Bill, actually, I've never heard of this Torsion Grip one. Um, the one I use is the, um, oh, what's it called? Oh, um, Five Second Fix. It's um, somebody here, Mop Mop or something, sent me a question. Where do I get Five Second Fix? Well, where does everybody get anything? eBay. I mean, that's all you got to do, mate. Just look on eBay for it, type it in. Or type it in Google and it'll point you where to get it, you know what I mean? That's all I do. If I'm looking for a certain thing, just type it in. Um, yeah, five second fix, because that's very good for like, you know, transparent stuff. If you're sticking anything that the sunlight will get through to it, if you can see if it's a transparent thing, the five second fix is ideal for that. But it's no good for like anything like a dark plastic. If you're sticking anything dark, because it, it doesn't sort of dry properly. You've got to have like a little fine little gap for it to dry. That's the only trouble with it. Super glue is the only other thing for that. Uh, Jeff Baker, um, Bob, I really enjoyed this restora restoration on the old VW. Watching you piecing the screen together, the way you did it was amazing. Well, oh, I don't know, Jeff, I don't know about that. I always like your way of printing out decals. I like watching and listening to the way you explain the process of doing this. It's therapeutic, Bob. <laughs> you, my missus don't think so. She tells me to bugger off. Don't get fed up leering about it. <laughs> That's why she tells me to piss off out here in the shed half the time. So uh, I comes out here for a bit of quiet, you know, a bit of peace and quiet. Um, good looking paint and detailing of the Volkswagen badge. Yeah, I had to, I had to um, do that twice actually, Jeff. I paused it up the first time. I, I went a little bit over on it and I had to wipe it off quick. As well as the bumpers, lights. Hope things are going well for you and your missus. Take care, my friend. Thanks, um, Jeff. Ralph Cooling. Hi, Bob. What a lovely job on the Volkswagen recovery vehicle. That is a brilliant way for doing stickers. Cannot wait to see some more videos from you. Take care, Bob. Ralph. Thanks, Ralph. Dinky's, Dinky Tony's Restorations. Thank you so much, Bob. You're going to save me some money on the decals from now on. Been looking... Been... Eh? On the decals from now on. Ah, oh, been look... He's put look, you know, he have not got the looking, that's what puzzled me. Been looking for some decals on the budgie scammer scarab I've been restoring. Thanks again, Bob, great video. No worries, Tony. Um, John Wally. Hi, which program are you using to do stickers, decals, etc., please? Everyone I've tried, it won't resize. Well, what you've got to do, the, the one I've got, I did, I think I've messaged it back to you. It's um, it's an old program now. Been out for quite a while. Roxio Easy Media Media Creator Ten. 
it's an old one it's not it's not a very new one I've had it for years and, and what you do you've got like all scanning things on it and all that stuff so you can scan and do whatever but when you print on on the actual program you gotta like when you scan something in for your scanner program you if you scan it like I showed you on the video you scan it the size it is actually size that it is that's why I use a bit of masking tape just to use as a sticker on the actual model so I can get the size and then I scan that onto a bit of card and then you've got the size of the actual decal then well when you scan it into your program when you open it up in your photo suite thing on this Roxio thing like I say on the video if you print that at actual size on that setting that's the size it'll come out the size it is what you actually scanned in if you know what I mean but once you scan that piece in you can zoom in on it on it on your on your program to put whatever you like there I mean you can put you know like your little badges on it paste it over the top like if you know how to do copy and paste and all this business you must know how to do that it's pretty basic and you just paste the picture over the top of the actual bit you scanned and then save it you can touch it up and sharpen it up and do whatever what, what you want to do and then when you print it off at actual size on that printer setting on on the photo suite it'll come out the right size you actually cut the little bit of you know masking tape for your sticker and then when it prints out it comes out if you know what i mean <laughs> but it's called easy media creator 10 roxio or something and it's a very old program now but it's a bloody good one it's, it's ideal for doing anything like this um a lot of these a lot of these programs they bring out now there's they're too complicated i can't get me head around them i mean that there's one out been out for quite a while, while now um oh was it oh it's a gif or something like that it's a free one it's it's a picture of a fox and i can't get my head around that program it's supposed to be easy but i can't work it out how to do anything with it it's a free photo suite you can get off the internet gif or giffy or something like that i don't know what it's called i suppose you leave it in the comments below you probably know put me right on what it is I ain't got a bloody clue what it's called now. But anyway, I likes me Roxio Media Creator Suite. That's what I use. Gaza P. I'm currently turning a Vega Mega Coach into an Italian job coach. Coach. The glass unit is cracked on it, so now your video was just in time. Now I know how to fix it. Well, yeah. Don't throw your old screens away, folks. Just keep them, because if there's any good bits on there, you can always like merge two screens together to make a good one. You can you can do that and you can hide the actual joins. Diecast Rescue. Nice one nice one Bob. Good idea about the paper saving. Yeah, when you print your decals out like I showed you on the old Volkswagen video. If it's a sticker or a decal, whatever. Decal paper isn't cheap. So um what you want to do is like print it on an ordinary piece of A4 paper, like a piece like that, like let's say it comes out there, just stick your little cut a little bit of um, decal paper right and stick it over that make sure you don't stick it the tape right over the front of it obviously you know <laughs> some people might put just enough to hold it on the edges just to hold it so it doesn't move when it's printing and then um all you're doing is printing that little tiny piece of decal paper then yeah and you still got the rest of the sheet you know to use if and when like so yeah that's what i'd do anyway i got it from some other channel i saw it, somebody do it like that i can't remember it was now but they they just cut out the area they wanted to print a bit of decal paper plonked it on their light and put the tape on the edges to hold it on and then fed the sheet back through again and then it printed it in exactly the same place but this time it went on the decal paper it's pretty simple to do folks um tony Dolan, another beautiful restoration bob thanks for the printing in info, trying to make and resize decals is still driving me bloody nuts. <laughs> As usual, you and your partner stay safe. Thanks, Tony. You'll get it, mate. You just watch the video a few times. You'll see what you know, what I've, what I've done, how I've done it. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. There's nothing sort of difficult with it. Craig Wilson, love listening to your chats at the start of the videos. If people want to, they can always fast forward to the restoration part. <laughs> Yeah, well, we had this debate back along, didn't we, about the old yap at the beginning. People was getting, some people were, was um, putting in the old, you know, dodgy things saying there was a bit 
didn't want to see me yapping and all that business. Well, like I said, just just run through it, folk. You know, I mean, if you don't want to hear me, run through and you'll see you'll see the video then, won't you? Um, anyway, let's get on. There's a last one here now. Crap old Nick from Jersey. Um, he's on about the glass repair as well. well I'll use the old, you know, five second fix. Came out looking brand new. Oh, no, come on, Nick. It wasn't that good. <laughs> It was all right. It was good enough, you know. It wasn't perfect. Beautiful restoration, Bob. And now I know. Oh, now I know what the candle on the bench is for. Yeah, he's, he's he must have seen my candle. I don't know what I've done with it. I've had a bit of a clear out here. I've, oh, is that we're in the corner now? Um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he's seen it in a couple of me previous videos. Me, me little candle, and he's wondered what it was for. He said, he said here in Jersey in the times past. But when we had a power cut, very, or we used to have one there, like you know, when it, when they had power cuts in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Nice to see you how you repaired the windscreen. Another useful tip. Thanks for showing us. Excellent repair in the roof and middle of the windscreen pillar. Best wishes to you and the missus. Stay safe, Nick. Cheers, Nick. And um, also, I'd like to say thanks. I found out in the last video. I, I um, oh, I've done it. I've got it over there somewhere. The fire engine and the, the two little vans. Ian Bradneck, thanks mate for the, for sending that. I, d I never had a note in with it, it was just a surprise package come through the post and I thought, who's this from? Uh, so thanks Nick, or uh, what am I all about? Ian, thanks Ian for sending me that. Um, and Roy, Roy Glass, I got your package with the, um, from Canada. Hope it's nice over there, probably a lot better than what it is here. But <laughs> Um, yeah, I got the, all, all the parts that come through the other week, so thanks for that. I think I did email you to say thanks. And, um, well, that's about it, really. Not much else to say at the beginning of this video. Apart from this this um, restoration here now, this one today, is the um, Holmes Wrecker truck. And this one was a bit of a pain in the bum to do. There's so many bits on it. was well, I was going to say, I was pulling my air out, but I ain't got enough there to pull out. But I would have done if I did. But I did. But I am. Um, so anyway. <laughs> but no, this was. This is from um, Rob's Matchbox Garage. So thanks for sending this this one to me, Rob. Now I know why you did. Because <laughs> I don't think you'd have liked to do this one. Because there's so many bloody bits it was driving me up the wall at one point, especially the bits on the cab. But anyway, we got there in the end. So um, sit back and enjoy and watch this one, and um, let me know if you you know in the comments what you think. And um, till um, next time, next week, yeah, maybe next week, yeah, it would be next week. I'll probably be back with another one next week. As you know, I always says I might be, I might not be, but I usually am. So, <laughs> till then, it's bye-bye from me. Okay, here we go. This um, this one here was um, kindly sent in by uh, another restoring channel, and it's Rob from Rob's Matchbox Garage. Thanks Rob for sending this in. It's a lot bigger than the ones he does. Most likely that's why he's give it to me for a bit of a challenge. Um, I've put a little yellow thing on the top for a light for now, but <laughs> as you see, it looks a bit silly. But anyway, we need a new windscreen. It just needs a real good strip down and well, new hooks on the back. A few little bits missing. The, the old horns on the tops are broke. Just needs a good tidy up, really, and a redo. So, um, without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay. Now this one here is a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare. I think it's going to be to do this one. There's so many bits. I've took it to pieces already. And I've reassembled it, you know, just to show you how to take it apart, if you know what I mean. So, underneath, first of all, I mean, that there, you got two rivets here, you got one there, you got one there, you got to drill them out. Then this comes off, it's just a piece of plastic that. I, I thought, honestly, that was a piece of metal before I actually had one of these, but it's a piece of plastic. Then you take the base plate off. I've already popped the wheels out, but the base plate comes off, and the wheels do actually pop out. If you look, 
you look under there like you just bend the wire up and they'll come out like that they'll just they'll pop out the back ones come out easier than the front ones actually so they comes out so you just got that piece then right so the next bit this is where it starts getting bloody complicated <laughs> you got this engine <laughs> you got to take that one out now that if you tilt the cab because the cab is a pain in the butt to get out as well you've got a little silver thing there which the engine clips onto so you've got to move that and sort of sort of prise it apart if you know what I mean and just prise it lift the cab up and that's playing around now because I haven't got it secured properly oh here we go fun and games time oh come on Oh, here we go, folks. The cab normally opens easily, but now because I'm filming it, it doesn't want to. Well, anyway, if I can get my finger in there. Ah, there he goes. There. Now, what you got to do, you just push that away, and it comes away like, like that. You see? And then. The engine will just drop out like that. It just drops out the bottom. I don't know why they've got a moving fan on it. Because you can't even see the bloody fan. when it, The fan moves around that. I don't see the point of that. So when I put this back together. I'm going to just glue that on there. Because it's a fiddly old job. Trying to get it to stay on there without. You know. I might detail the engine anyway. To make it look a bit more interesting. But I'm going to probably glue that fan on there. Because it's a pain in the ass. Putting it back together when you do that. Anyway this piece here. That there piece will slot out of there. Some sometimes they're a bit stiff, but that comes out of the side, so you can polish that up, do whatever you want with it. Now to get the cab off, you've actually got to struggle like a pig. There's a little tab in there, and you've got to really struggle to get that there. I got a screwdriver and I just kept digging away like that, and you've got to get that to bend down behind this bit so that this bottom piece comes off and then I've actually put the glass back in, a new piece of glass in this one, to hold all these bits on because the old piece of glass all broke into bits, so I've actually got a new piece of glass anyway and put in it, just just to show you people how to, you know, do it but you, to get this, this piece off you've got to drill inside once you've got this off, so I've already drilled inside obviously because I've got a new bit of glass there, so I'll get you out of the way it's just drilled in like that like you see and I've got a new set of them over here so we're right there now to get this off you've got to dig away at this tab because this is going to have to be glued back and you've got to somehow sort of force it down because you can't get this piece off of, the, off of here before until you get this top piece off and it is such a bloody pain in the butt to try and get off. This should just pop off because I've, I've actually made that a bit shorter than it needs to be. So, I mean, I should be able to just prise this piece off. Saying that. There's no being a pain to take apart now. Perhaps if I take this front piece out here, this might help it. Because there is a little bit of plastic here that slots this onto it as well. So you can take this piece out if you want to. That pulls out. We get a very tiny thing in there. That will pop out, like you see. Because that holds the um, thing as well. It might come out a bit easier now, actually. Oh, it's come, it's fell apart now, look. Typical. <laughs> That's what I should have done. Anyway, that comes off like that, and you've got your seats there and your glass. The glass, the glass won't come out when you do yours because it'll be riveted in. Because what it does, it holds all these pieces in here and the side mirrors and things like that. You've got your side mirrors that they come up and they just pop out like that. And one of them's broke while I was doing it, so I've only got the bottom part there. I've got the top part got to be glued back. So that's another another stupid little repair I've got to do as well so there's a broken one that 
so I'll put that with that, that can be glued back. These here just come out. Well, when I'm putting this back together, I'm going to glue these pieces in here because when you're trying to put the glass in, they all fall out and it's so awkward. So I'm going to just tack these pieces on like that when I when I put it back together after these has all been cleaned up. But they come out like that, you see, and they just come away. Same with the other one, that and just pop out like that. So then you've got your cab, you drill down there, and then your little trumpet bit comes out and your glass comes out. But that's there's your cab. It's just an ordinary bog standard piece, you know, needs cleaning up. So we'll put all that out of the way. Right now it gets complicated. <laughs> you might not think it's complicated by looking at it, but <laughs> believe me, it's a right pain. This is partly why I did it. I did this off camera and took it apart off camera because I wanted to make sure I could get the video done but e quite easy. Now this bottom part, the, the tilting part, comes off now because you haven't got the engine in there. You can't put this on with the engine in because it hampers where you've got to put these little bits here. Like. So you've got to put them, you put them like over that. If you can see. You put them over that and they go in like that and they sit in there. But when you've got the engine in there, you can't do it. So you, now you can, once the cab's off and all that. I don't know why there's a hole. There's a hole there. It started rusting away by the looks of it, doesn't it? I don't know why that hole's there. But that was what it was like. So There's another bit that can be cleaned now. Now this gets complicated now. Now this bit here, to get this off, this piece, there's two very fine rivets there. You can't put rivets back in there. That's the only trouble. It's for this base plate thing. It's for this. And you've got to get this plate out before you can get this piece off. Because it locks in that back piece. And you and the other bit pushes forward on that piece. So what you've got to do, you've got to drill down there very carefully. Once you've done enough, it will pop and it will go through. Don't worry, because it's only pushed through because it's let go. It hasn't gone through the actual plate. So once you get that out, like that, like you see, there is a little nick there, like you can get it out. You've got to lift that off of there, like that. Then this piece here comes forward like that, see, because if you look there, that, there's two little, they're bent like that. And they go in them holes and then they push forward like that and then that piece there gets locked into place with this then you can get that piece off so you once you've done that and that'll come out then that piece there pulls back like that and then that'll come out like that then you've got your bottom plate so that's two plates there they're ready to be stripped and whatever that there can be polished up with your dremel you could have that pure metal colour if you wanted to give it a lacquer look alright that's probably what I'll do with that. This got to come off. I haven't drilled this off yet. But it's only a little rivet there, look. It looks like there is a bit of meat there you can get through to put another little rivet in, or a screw, or whatever you want to do. But that plastic piece will have to come off before we can um, strip that. So that's a job to do next. Now what I was thinking with this piece, I don't really want to take this apart. I am got a light for the top. I found something What I'm going to paint red. I've oiled all this up so it all works and it seems to be a lot more freer now but what I'm thinking of doing with this I've moved all the, all these wires or the, all this um, cord out of the way look, because this is where the hook's got to be put on so I've moved all that out of the way and what I was thinking is I was going to try and get the brush over that and clean this up slightly with the wire brush maybe just you know re-chrome some of this with the uh, Molotov and I was thinking of like just sanding this down slightly and repainting this with an ordinary tin of Humbro you, I mean you can take it apart there's two rivets there like, but I thought it would be a lot more bothering what it's worth because I thought well, the actual paint that's on it ain't too bad it's, there's just a few bits missing and I thought well, it would be a lot quicker and easier just to paint this by hand with ordinary red humble paint so that's what I decided to do with this piece I don't really want to take all that apart there's no reason to really 
these here pieces here can be just polished up slightly with the old Dremel like you know cleaned up a bit and of course like I say you can't buy the lights to go on the top because there was a piece missing that there's actually out of a lighter refueling cap <laughs> and I pushed it on I can't get it off now probably could have a push I suppose with me old screwdriver but I thought well that'll cover that up you know so that's what we're going to do I'm going to next job I'm going to screw this one out or drill this one out I should say get that drilled so I can put a little tiny rivet in there to put that piece back on I'm going to polish that up and strip the rest of the cab and um, that's the way we're going to do this one all these pieces here got to be all cleaned up the old wire brush would do that and I've got new hooks here I've even let the, even the little man that he's waiting with his spanner well, I don't think he's going to be a lot of help to me today. But I've got new hooks to go on the back. I've polished them up. But in the process of polishing these up, you've got to be very careful because this one broke from there to there. So what I had to do, I don't know if you watched the um, transporter video yet, but what I had to do was the same process. I thought, bloody hell, I can't get another hook now. That one was all right. I just I had to drill a little tiny hole down through here with my smallest drill, Dremel drill, down through so far into there, and up into there. Get a pin or a needle. I'll show you the needle. There's the needle, or what's left of it. There's a point, and I actually cut a piece off about that long, about that much. And I fed that in, like so, like like that, and then half into the other bit, like that, and glued it. And I managed to repair this piece, so that would be all right. You, that's the only way you can repair these. It's no good just trying to glue them together because they'll just they'll just break apart. You've got to put that reinforcement bar inside them like that, to you know, to, to give it that strength, extra strength, right down through the middle. You only need a piece about that long, so it goes in so far like that and then so far into that piece but I had to repair that one and that's a repro part and it seems alright now so don't have to worry about that anymore so I always keep little needles like that they always come in handy for reinforcement bars because you never know when you need it so mate you can go out of the way you have to wait till your truck's done mate it's not done yet but that's what we're going to do I'm gonna, like I said I'm going to glue that fan on there I'll detail the engine up next step stripping all this right I've um, wire brushed some of this now and I've um, cleaned up that a bit some of it's going to have to be done with the old um, molotov but I've, I've cleaned these up I might leave these as they are actually because they're not too bad but I'm going to hand paint this and I'm going to get all this stripped now so that'll be a job done I've got that there to, to um, wire brush yet because I want that the natural metal colour give that a good shine that's got to be cleaned and then we'll bring it back okay guys what I've done with this I've just cleaned all this up with the brush as well as I can I polish this put new string on or rope whatever you want to call it I've got to put the hooks on tie them on and I've hand painted this as you can see it's not coming out too bad I thought it would be better to hand paint it it's, it's too much to be messing around with taking all that apart so that's what I've done with that. And what I'm going to do now, I haven't got a light for the top. There's supposed to be a little light goes on top of there. And I've just found in my drawer, I was just wondering whether if I cut this off, the hole in the end, it's just a, it's just an old pen. But the hole in the end there, it's exactly the same size as that. So if I cut off a piece of this and put the old red, you know, permanent marker on it, that should act as a light. I've only got to um, put a bit of um, nail varnish over the top of it or lacquer it just to keep the colour there. If you wonder what the noise is in the background, it's me um, kettle boiling because I've got to strip the other parts. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to cut a bit of this off and I'll bring it back and let you see it. Okay, people, what I've done, I've polished this piece up. It's all been stripped now because there was, there was paint on this. I don't know why they didn't just polish it. It looks a lot better like that. So that's all been polished up. 
the grill's been polished up all this got to be undercoated now it's all cleaned up all the old top and all that or the cab that's all got to be um, undercoated and then we can um, start thinking about putting it all back together again Let's go something like that this piece here I've put the hooks on, put new cotton or twine or whatever you want to call that, put new bits on there and the actual light on the top, believe it or not, it's come out alright with that bit of pen. That's what it was, a bit of, bit of pen. I put some five second fix in the top there to hold it and put, painted that over with a permanent marker. So yeah, it's come out pretty good. So that's all that piece ready. I've actually put a bit of glue on the tyres because they were a bit slack. So um, they will come off if you've got to get them off, but that piece is all finished with now anyway, so that can go out the way. So then the rest of the bits is just going to be sprayed now. So I'm going to undercoat them and um, then I'll show you the spraying part. And there's the old fan. I said to you I'm going to glue that one in there because I don't know which way it goes now, that way I think, yeah. I've detailed the engine slightly, only a little bit. And the old fan, I could stick it on there actually, because it's, um, it's going to end up getting lost in a minute. I don't know why it turns anyway, it doesn't need to turn. You can't see it. <laughs> Once it's all inside the actual, underneath the cab, you can't see the bloody thing anyway, so I don't know why they've got it moving. Another little gimmick, I suppose. There, that'll do. So that won't get lost again. Right, that'll do for now. Let's get on and get this undercoated, and then I'll bring you back and we'll be spraying the colour on. Well guys, <laughs> I said I'd be bringing, bringing you back and we'll be spraying the colour on, but I've done it. <laughs> it was a nice day outside and I went outside and I'd done a little test run with this paint I had and I've ended up spraying all of it. I thought, bugger it, you've seen me spray stuff before. I'm just waiting for this to harden up now. It's the enamel type paint, what I used before, so I don't need to lacquer any of this. The other two bits are still outside in the sun, drying off. But you've seen me spray stuff before, you know what the procedure is with that so i put these um, wheels back in this base now this has all been lacquered now this and it's it's quite easy these springs come up i've had to glue that one down slightly because he was slightly slacker so i pushed that bit of wire down and put a bit of um, glue in there to hold that because he was a bit you know a bit loose but that's that's all you do with that but that piece there what i told you i polished i lacquered that just to protect it so when all this goes back, you know, it'll all go back nice and tidy. And um, I've also cleaned up the ladders as well. I've pruned them. Really, all I've been doing is... Well, the windscreen, I've done the windscreen as well. I'm still waiting for that to dry off. It's taken a bit of time. I don't know why. But all I've been doing really is just, you know, getting everything ready to put back together. This grill, I said to you, I polished it. <laughs> Well, I've looked on since looked on the picture the only bit that needed polishing was the top half because that was a bit where the Ford is the bottom half was painted red so I've had to mass that off because I couldn't lacquer that because that goes all funny and I've had to mass this piece off and lacquer the back piece and that will go on there like when it's done that see somehow it will go on there there you go but yeah that's all I've been doing so um Next stage, oh, I've done the, put a bit of gloss on the bumper as well to tidy that one up a bit. But next stage will be assembly. <laughs> Sorry about the um, spraying, but you've seen me do it before, a thousand times, I'm sure. Right then, <clears throat> everything's dry now, so um, I'm hoping I'm going to get this right. <laughs> to start with, this here bit, you're going to have to put this on there first and clip that back so it's into that 
the round bit there like that. That's to start with. You're going to have to do that bit first. I've already put the thing on. I've glued that one back onto there and put a little rivet into there. So that's your first job. Next bit is the actual winch. Now, that there, you look at them things, they, they push in the two um, hooks, hook back like that. So we've got to get that in there. And by holding that as well, we have to make sure that's pushed back. And then we've got to get our plate thing in there. And we've got, lock, we've got to lock this down there. If we push it down like that, there. That should stay there now. You see? Then we've got to turn this upside down. And we've got to glue this. Glue these rivets back in. But what I'm going to do, before I do that, I'm going to put a bit of glue underneath, underneath that piece as well. Because... Um, just for extra, you know, safety, because I mean, they two rivets is, um, they're not going to glue back, are they? So, um, if I, that pushes forward like that, that's right, if I can get a bit of glue under there, <coughs> under here, that's going to be extra, sort of, um, security, that's the word I was looking for. So this, um, oop. I'm trying to do it, get out of the light, so as you can see, oh everything's going wrong now, here we go, oh that's alright, you can see that, that's not too bad, alright so I'll put some glue under there, if I do it that way you can see what I'm doing all around underneath there make sure there's plenty dumped around that bit right then so now if we move that glue along and knock that over again <laughs> push that forward again See, this is what I mean about this being so bloody damn fiddly. Now I put the glue on, it doesn't want to go any further. Which is typical. Oh. Ah, right, get in, that's it. Right, now that's going to, it's got to click into the actual rivets. Because I have got a rivet there. If you see underneath, that rivet is not lined up properly there. Like that's why he's not going in. got to go in this ain't going according to plan folks the glue's not even sticking it either I think it's going to have to be relied on with the two rivets I think with the what do you call it? The um, bicarbonate. Ah, hang on. I'm going to have to take this off camera, folks. I'm just going to try and line this rivet up. It's awkward reaching around. Right, I've got it. Um, I've 
got the rivets pushed back in that is a very awkward job to get that in there now what I'm going to do is put some glue in here and use the bicarbonate to seal it if you know what I mean if I bring the glue a bit closer you can see what I'm doing put some really big blobs in there I'm also going to put a bit along the ridge there just for a bit of extra this is the messiest part of this but it can't be helped it's the only way you can get it to go back you know if you want it to stay there that's all you can do right get the old I know it's messing everything up here mixing everything entirely but I can't be helping that oh bugger here we go <laughs> Well, that's done it. I've got a bloody sh shovel full in there now. Have to give this one a good brush out in a minute. I'm making a mess of this, folks. But that's the only way I can do this. You can't put it away or put it back any other way. You've, you've got to glue it unless you've got anything like um, what's this stuff they use? Um, God, it's like a it's like a putty tough stuff you can use. Unless you've got any of that, well, <laughs> unless you've got any of that stuff, there's not a lot you can do about it. It goes off really hard apparently, I don't know what it's called now. Leave it in the comments down the bottom, I'm sure. I'm sure some of you know the stuff I'm talking about. I'll give this one a clean up now, look. It's just been restored and it's dirty. Bloody marvellous. Right, so... Cool. One my bloody face that did. Right, so anyway, as I was saying, perhaps we can get back to um, putting the rest of it back now. <laughs> There's all that. I can sweep all this up. Actually, I'll sweep that up quick. Right, where were we? That's going to have to be touched in. I've chipped that. So that's not good. But we've got the um, bottom piece on so now let's stop these swinging around I'm going to turn that that way that's it sort this out quick because it'll be easier to sort out while you're um, while you haven't got the cab on because you've got to get your hand around here turn them back that way oh, it's supposed to turn back easy oh there it is get the on the runners it's come off of the actual runner see there we go Oak the oaks in the back. And there. That should do for that. 
Right, next job, we're going to put the cab on. Now, to do that, this piece, it's got, like I said, you've got to put the engine in afterwards. So, you, this piece is going to go in under like that first. So, once you've done that, to hold that piece on, we can put all this back. Now that piece there slots into there and what you want is a bit of um, glue just to tack that in there just like that and put it in bloody straight it would help there now the engine will just slot in like that and you can turn it back I mean, this cab ain't going to tilt properly until you've actually got the bloody. See, there's a, it's got to slip over there, let's say. The engine. There's the. Um, I suppose it's an air filter, I suppose, I don't know. But the engine's got to slip over that little. There he goes. Like that, you see. That piece there slips over to that piece, and then that holds all that in. But the cabin going to tilt properly until you've actually got the bottom on. So the next bit, we have to leave that now. We've got to put this cab together. And um, <coughs> this is where it gets um, fiddly, this cab. Clean that off a bit, it's getting grubby already. Now, I've got a pipe that goes in here somewhere. I don't know what I've done with the bloody thing. Oh, there it is, right in front of me now. Now, that just pushes into there. So that's pretty... Um, straightforward push it in like that that just clips in like that and that piece goes underneath like that so that's that stays there all right you're right with that bit now the rest of it these pieces here all this is going to have to be bloody um, <laughs> glued in so I'm gonna to have to put a bit of um actually I could glue that in afterwards actually once the glass is in there but then again yeah I think I'll put a bit there now just to, well no I won't I'll get all these other bits on first right these mirrors now these are going to be a bit of a bugger I think because they slot in like that and they've got to be tacked I'm going to have to tack them there to stop them moving around because if you look down there look, they're supposed to go over that piece but they never do well they don't on mine anyway so they're supposed to clip up over that but they don't want to do that for some reason Don't tell me. Don't ask me why because I, I ain't got a bloody clue. So I'm gonna get that lined up. So it's virtual. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, I'll have to put something down here and get that lined up so it's virtually over it. Because I want this to set in the right place.
There, see, it was over it then, and it jumped off again. I don't know why this won't just clip in there, because there's nothing stopping it. There's nothing at all stopping it from clipping in there, but it just will not go in there. Why they made these so fiddly? Hey, you thought I was going to swear then, didn't you? I nearly did. It's such a poor design. I'm going to have to come back. This is going to go on too long, folks. I'll put these in. And I'll show you what I did, how I did it, did it, because it's so awkward doing it in front of this poxy camera. I can't get my hands there properly or anything. So I'm going to put these mirrors in, I'm going to tack them in there, and I'll show you how I've done it, where I put the glue. You'll see how it goes in anyway, because, I mean, you can see how they go in like that. Look. So, you know, you know how they go in there. So I'll be right back. Wow, what a job that was. At last, I've got all the bits all pushed back in. And this is the best way to do it, I think, folks, is you're going to have to tack these pieces in because it's a pain in the ass when you've got the glass there. You're trying to... Because the glass is meant to hold all these bits in, you see. Right, so as usual, I'm going to put a bit of my... Um, I've got a bit here ready. A bit of me, me old... Um, what do you call it stuff on there and I'm hoping that's going to hold the actual horns in the top as well so we're going to drop that in as you see it's meant to fit there it does, it does fit. It's meant to fit so that everything else, if I push the horns in the top, That should hold the horns as well. I mean, if you want to use, if you want to use super glue, then by all means. But I'll put me. You know, I should have put a bit more there, really. But I think that'll do it. So now it's taking shape. So next bit. Is we've got to put it back on here. So, seats go in like that, and hopefully, oh well, saying that might be easier to put the seats there like that and do it, drop it on instead. Now, this is where it's got to go over that clip. See, this is where it gets awkward, folks. This is where the cab don't want to come up. Get the seats in that way. I think the best way is if we get it in at an angle like this. See, we've got that pipe burn now. That's what's holding it up. Get in there. Right. My trumpets is coming off. Yeah, I probably have to glue that in there in a minute. See, this is 
this is not a fun model to take on folks if you can help it it's a really bad one to do because there's so many stupid little bits on this that interfere with other stupid little bits oh. see that's got to go up that's got to go up and then we can push our badge in the front that and you can if you want to just for safety put a bit of glue in there I think what I'll use is the five second fix for this because that dries harder with the old as long as the daylight showing on it it dries pretty good so I'm gonna so I'm not left in here. I'm gonna actually fill that bloody O up. Completely had enough of this one, guys. Been a hard one to do this. Give it a nice dry off like that. Yeah, it's gone off. Good stuff, this. As long as it can see daylight, it's like if you're doing screens and repairing screens, it, it's really good stuff for that. I found it good for the old um, 261 screen on the old Bond car, where the, where the pins sit on the top of the screen. When you put it back together, sometimes a little piece is missing. Well, you can make a new piece with this just by squirting a little bit on there and then drying it and then squirting another little bit till you get it to the right size you need that should do and it saves buying a whole new piece of glass just because a little tiny 5mm piece of, of um, glass is missing but there, now it's toting pretty good now so that's all sorted now Obviously the horns, I'm going to have to do them, I think. I'm going to have to glue them in again. Right, now I've got my rivets ready for this. You want to get our base plate. He just clips on just like that. Nothing special about that. You get your bumper. Actually, I'm going to have to do that. Well, it's straight. The bumper goes in there like that. And I've actually got... Oh, which one was I going to use? Yeah, that one. I've got a little washer. Because it was... It? Oh, that's the one, isn't it? Is that the one? Yeah. I think that's... It. Yeah, that's the one with the washer. That's the washer that came off of there. Where's my tweezers? I think it goes up the other way. That's the washer for that one. Get a bit of glue. Put our rivet in. 
because I had this one all I pre cut these to size before I went to go to do this so I um, knew how big I was going to have to do them back one I've had to find a little washer to put there because the rivet is slightly um, a bit small if you know what I mean but there we go right she's back together folks I'm not happy with that so I'm going to glue that Wipe all my guns off of it. Yeah, I'm not quite happy with that. I'm going to glue it to the roof. I've wiped the roof off slightly. See, there's guns on there, look. If I bit around now that should do it I think put a bit on the um, edges Yes, that should do it. Let's hold her steady. That should do that. Right, next job. Decals, glue can go away, all this can go away, I'll, put, I'll get everything tidied up here and get the decals ready now. Right then, I've still got to touch up it up, I know. Luckily enough, the back one is just a sticker, so that should be pretty straightforward, so we'll get that one off. And that's where your back lights are on the sticker so this one try and line this one up nicely how high does this go I'd say about there should do it cover up that horrible horrible line that's going across there Just a slight little bit too long he is. Only, only a little tiny bit, but he'll be alright. Just in that corner he's a little bit too long, but get the old nail in there. I don't think he'll be going anywhere very soon. Right, let's um put the old decals on. Holmes Wrecker. Get them soaking in our 
Bone me border, just cow border I use this, I don't mess around with all this bone border stuff. Just chuck it in cold, it might take a little bit longer, but let that soak for a minute. And we've got to have it going at an angle like that, apparently. Lucky enough, these here, Rob sent these through with the actual model. So, um, thanks for that, Rob. That's, uh, it's a great help because I, I can't print these. I have scanned them and I've um, got them so I can print the, the same size but the way I scanned them I, I scanned the back piece up, that's alright, that's easy enough to duplicate, it's just only a sticker but the, the sticker, these uh, decals have got white writing and I can't print white so the only way I can do it is get white decal paper, use that and actually put a red background behind it the actual sticker and put white writing on it and it can be done that way but you've, you're you going to have to just cut around and have the red that comes from the printer to try and match with this I mean it's better than nothing <laughs> if, if you ain't got any but I reckon that would work alright that's the only way I can do it on my printer right let's see if that's going to move Yeah, we got a bit of movement, folks. These are very delicate, these little stickers. I cannot do that one. As I said, I like to use my little brush. Just hold it there like that and just... Brush all the excess water away. Hold it there. Brush it all away like that. Nice little soft brush, that's all you want. Very soft brush. I find it easier than using cotton buds and stuff like that. There, that one's on there. Let me do the same the other side. Put that slight angle. So the other one should be ready to come off now. Let's get all the excess water off. Yeah, he's moving. brush and for some reason this one doesn't want to stick put a bit of um, water on there Got a stick, you little bugger. Brush the excess away again. That should do it, folks. Holmes Wrecker is now unwrecked. So, let's take a look at it on the old turntable and see what we got. Okay, then. As I said, this one here was uh, pretty rough at the beginning. I said all the bits that's missing, the hooks and everything else. As you can see, he was pretty rough. 
and um, <laughs> don't do one of these if you can help it because as you saw from the troubles I had is a pain in the backside there's so many little bits on it and bits that you can't put in before you put other bits in so if you can do without doing one of these do without it <laughs> but anyway we, we had a go at it and um, well quite surprised really but it did come out pretty good in the end so let's take a look at it and see what it's like now As you can see, <laughs> new glass, little man's there, he's, he's come back, and um, well, new hooks on it, all cleaned up, repainted, everything's been good to, to once over, and um, well, I think it's looking pretty good now, very pleased how this came out in the end, it was a pain in the ass to put together again, but there you go, these things are sent to try us, so anyway, if you um, enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, you know, subscribe, you know, I've got lots more videos to come, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Until then, it's bye bye from me.